Hey there everybody, uh, Jason Shepard here with a buddy of mine, Mike Daniels, who um, actually just passed his private pilot check ride. And I uh, flagged Mike down, he is a uh, M0A fan and also someone who helped us out with, um, with flying across America. So Mike has been a great asset to uh, myself and everything, and he is here to share his knowledge with you guys. So Mike, how you doing, bud? Doing pretty good. How are you? Oh man, I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I want to share a story with you guys real quick. When I first met Mike, now Mike is in um, Mike is in Vegas, and we flew into Vegas, and Mike and I were talking on the phone and everything, and um, you know, I told Mike where I was and where he would meet us. So I'm waiting for him, looking around for Mike and his wife, and Mike comes up to me and goes, "Are you one of them?" And, <laughs> and here I am in the middle of Las Vegas, going. Maybe I'm one of them. I don't know. So you know, and look at Mike. He's a he's a big scary guy. You know, so I was I was kind of worried. But sure enough, it was it was Mike, and he wasn't as scary as I thought. So <laughs> that was my first impression of Mike Daniels. So it was kind of interesting. But anyways, Mike, what everyone really wants to know is about the check ride. I mean, there's so many. Uh, a lot of people have fears and anxieties with the check ride. I mean, all I want is a recap of yours. I mean, what did you do uh, planning-wise to prep us for it? And everything? just kind of run us through your check ride and your, what you did for it. Um, basically, I did a, a lot of studying. What worried me the most was the oral. I wasn't as worried about my flying. Um, but I felt that the maneuver was pretty good. So and the only way I seemed to be able to learn anything study-wise to prep for the oral was to uh, write it down, you know, uh, to do arrow. And uh, aviate and all of the little acronyms that we use uh, track everything we're supposed to know that we know the examiner's going to ask. And I just wrote those down and wrote those down, and I just studied as much as I could up to the day um, of the check ride. I was studying up to the last minute. Mm -hmm. As far as the flying goes, uh, I was practicing all the maneuvers in the PTS. Um, I was going up two hours at a whack uh, three times a week, a couple of weeks before the check ride. Three, four days before the check ride, I went up with my instructor a final time, um, and he basically did a mock check ride with me as far as the flying part goes. Cool, very cool. Because yeah. I read your book. Oh well, we, we weren't <laughs> going to mention that, but you know, I guess I guess we have to that you brought it up. <laughs> I, I did read it, so I, I read your book, and ironically enough, there was a couple other podcasts that were just. Timing was almost perfect where they were doing episodes on how to pass a check ride and right. stuff too. I mean, all the their resources I could pull in. Yeah, that's the thing. There is so much information out there for people to get their hands on, not just on my website, but all across um, you know, the web finding stuff. So let's talk about this now. What was the most difficult question you were asked on your oral exam? And what was the part that worried you the most on the flight? I'll let you think about those two. Wow, the most difficult question I was asked on the oral exam. Um, actually, one of the things, and I get the impression a lot of DPs do this, one of the things he did is he wrote a bunch of problems up on the board, different questions, different problems, and he had me go down and answer all these problems. And uh, one of them was uh, density altitude, and he picked, a, he, he picked a, a airport in California that's like 57 foot, and he wrote up a some weather information on the board for it, and I had to calculate it. And it was basically I had a little paper density altitude chart I carried with me, and it right. was off the chart, so I had to project past that, and then I double checked myself with my wizard wheel. And it was like <laughs> 2,400 feet was the density altitude for this airport with the weather he'd given. Uh -huh. and so that was a uh, that was a tough one. The hardest one though was calculating the takeoff roll uh... with the weather information he gave me for the tomahawk we were riding and that's okay. mainly because the POH in this 7, 1977 tomahawk the charts like really small and really hard to draw lines across right exactly like, and they're so old yeah. yeah that's awesome so what about that's interesting that you carry the density altitude form with you and part of that's flying out west too we don't necessarily do that as much in florida we have what you're referring to as the wizard wheel um, we call them an e6b in florida i don't know what happened to you guys in vegas but he's <laughs> we call him wizard. I know, I know I'm, I'm teasing you. Um, so what about the uh, what about the flight? I mean, what were you most worried about going into the flight? Uh, just nervousness of being 
judge to being graded. Um, I'm usually uh, an in charge kind of guy, and it's really hard not, you know, to, to be being judged and critiqued. Uh, so I was pretty nervous about it, and I made a couple of dumb little errors, but obviously not bad enough to fail me because I passed. Right? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, That's I was cool. I was nervous about that. Um, nervous about being it, nervous. It turns around a point where probably my weakest maneuver, that and soft field landings. Mm -hmm. Although I can pull them off, uh -huh. I... I'm not the best with those. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah. I can do them within the standards most of the time, mm -hmm. but you know, and if you bust altitude a little bit, you correct it, and they're right. Well, part of that is too. I mean, keep in mind you're flying in the Tomahawk, so you're low wing air aircraft with a T tail. You know that doesn't yeah. that doesn't make it easy for soft field landing. That's two things against you. You know, so that's yeah. really interesting though. Was there anything on the? Uh, uh, on the flight, you wish you could have you could have had back. Like, man, I really muffed up those steep turns or something like that. Uh, that would be it. Yes, the steep turn. Oh, <laughs> one of my <laughs> steep turns. Actually, I started my steep turns, and I and I guess I wasn't. I I don't know. Maybe I wasn't prepared for this particular part, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't quite realize it was going to be figure eight. I thought I was going to do a steep turn to the left, and then later on we do one to the right or something. All right. I didn't quite understand what he was saying, and basically he wanted me to do a steep turn to the left, come back out on the same heading, and then immediately roll right into one on the right. And I didn't quite catch that at first. And I came out on the heading and was flying my heading, and he's like, well, "You're supposed to do a turn to the right." I'm like, oh, I guess I didn't yeah. quite understand. That's interesting because for a commercial pilot, you have to do that consecutively—a turn to the left and instantly one to the right. That's commercial pilot stuff. Private pilot, you're allowed to hold your heading for a bit, so maybe. He was just holding you to some higher standards to kind of see how you perform. Maybe he was a little confused because he does lots of check rides. Yeah, or he, he was like, yeah. I can't remember what, this, what license this guy's going for. You should look at your certificate in the mail. Maybe it'll say commercial pilot, and you'll be like, yeah. yeah I don't think so. Yeah, that might be good. So, <laughs> cool. Well, Mike, I won't take up any more of your time. One last question here. Let's say there's someone listening to this right now, and I'm sure there is that is in your your shoes or your former shoes I guess right now what words of advice could you give them to help them succeed on their private pilot check ride or any check ride for that matter well uh, obviously I think the, the thing that helped me more than anything was feeling confident that I knew I could do it mm -hmm. I mean if you're not confident I don't you know you you gotta know you can do it you gotta be confident and I mean of course I had a little doubt but I think projecting the confidence is what instills the the DA or the DPE to say that, uh, you know, yeah, I think you're going to be okay. And uh, my instructor prepared me very, very well. Um, I, when I, the first thing I did, I gave him a, my, uh, the briefing, right? The passenger briefing. The right, part right. The briefing. And he said, he told me that was the most thorough briefing I ever had. And he had wow. said more than once that your instructors prepared you very well for this. So I think that helped overcome the little errors that I made. The preparedness that I had for it. Um, uh -huh. So I would be confident, uh, study, know everything on the sectional. So when he points to anything on the sectional, do it. And he did something that was really neat I want to mention. Uh -huh. uh, I've never seen this done before. I think it's a great technique. He put us on Henderson Airport here in Vegas. Uh -huh. As you're standing on the runway, I want you to go up to uh, um, 24,000 feet you tell me what each airspace is you transition and you're in D, then you're in E for 500 feet, then you're in Bravo from Nellis and it just, it just kind of layers all the way up. Yeah, exactly. You hit Class A, you hit Class E again. Yeah, it was a very neat exercise for that particular unique area that I happen to fly around. So. Uh -huh. That's very neat. Yeah, I've, I've done similar things with my students like, you, hey, you're in a rocket ship and you're going straight up. That's, and that's tough, like the Class E airspace. Where does class E start? Where does G end? You know, that's confusing to a lot of people. You know, so that's a that's a real great exercise for uh, for people to do. So that is uh, very cool, Mike. So you are a uh, private pilot. I mean, have you taken the wife flying yet, or what you been up to? Oh uh, yeah, we did. We um, the Saturday I did the check ride on Monday the twentieth, and the following or Tuesday, whatever day that was. Anyway, the following Saturday. Uh, we did a, a little flight in the Tomahawk out to Gene, Nevada. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's a 0L7 if you're interested. Uh -huh. There's a casino out there next to Gene. Of course, it's Nevada. And it's 40 miles south of town. It wasn't a real far flight, uh -huh. uh, but it gets really hot really fast. It's yeah. a lot here in Vegas, so I didn't want to be up too late in the air. So we went out there, flew out there, had breakfast, uh, flew back, 
you know, we're done by like 9.30 in the morning when it was a zillion degrees out already. Mm -hmm. So we're, we plan on doing some more flying together. My wife and I were really looking forward to doing some of it, but it's so hot this time of year that yeah. we probably won't do too many long trips just kind of piddle around the valley here and maybe over by Hoover Dam for some pictures or something and right. it'll start to cool down a bit. That's awesome. Very cool. And before I let you go, tell everyone what you are building in the garage and in the living room. I'm building a, a Zenith CH750. It's an STOL. Um, it's a great little airplane. The rudder's done in the back here behind me. And uh, <laughs> the elevators, uh, the horizontal stabilizer is mostly done in the garage. Just start the elevator next. We're pretty excited to be building that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, that is, uh, that's very awesome. Well, cool, Mike. Thank you so much for your time. If you guys want to follow along with Mike, links to his Twitter and links to his uh, Blogspot blog are right down uh, beneath this video, so you can check that out learn more about Mike. And, uh, Mike, thank you so much for your time with everything. I really appreciate it. Can I plug my podcast? Oh, yeah. Well, you, everything. Your, oh, your podcast. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? Highfires.com. Yeah, we were a pot of palooza at Osh over the weekend. So, what was I, Mike? You, you plug you plug it for me because I'm not going to do it justice. Go for it. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, you can listen to us on the MileHighFlyers.com is where you can find our podcast. So you can go to iTunes, uh, Mile High Flyers. Uh, it's a pretty good podcast. There's basically four or five of us that get together and talk. Most of the most of the crews in Denver, which is why it's Mile High Flyers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm out here in Vegas. My wife's on it because she serves a lot in my flying experience. So she's on a few episodes here and there. That's neat. Very cool. So a link to that, guys, will also be down uh, beneath this. So you guys can check out that, listen to the podcast, listen to Mike. And, um, Mike, I believe that's all I have for you guys. Remember, a good pilot is always learning. I'll catch you guys later. Absolutely. I got my license to learn. Thanks, Jason. All right. See ya.